हाँ जी वाहगुरु जी का खालसा वाहगुरु जी की फतेह आई होप एवरीवन कैन हियर मी वील थैंक यू ऑल फॉर लॉगिंग इन टू द सिक्स रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट वेबिनार टुडे एंड माय नेम इज गुरविंदर सिंह एंड आई विल होस्ट एंड मॉडरेट टुडेस सेशन द प्रेजेंटेशन विल बिगिन शॉर्टली बट बिफोर वी बिगिन I'd like to review a few housekeeping items and let you know how we can uh, participate in today's web event. And then I'll provide some information about Six Research Institute and Jasmine Kaur and Harlev Kaur before handing over the main presentation. So we, what we're looking at right now is the screen on webinar, go to webinar attendee interface view. And uh, on your left you will see everything that the presenter will share on the screen and on the control panel on the right is how you can participate in today's session by clicking on the orange arrow you can uh, open and close your control panel now what from the view menu you can also choose the to hide or open the control panel if or you can keep it open if you prefer the audio pane provides the audio information and by default you have joined the webinar via mic and speakers in order to set it up you have to click audio setup and select your computer speakers or headset devices or if you prefer you can uh, use the telephone to listen in to the conversation during the presentation if you have any questions you can send your questions to me via the chat panel and click send and a presenter will be answering all questions during the Q&A session as a reminder today's webinar is being recorded and everybody will receive an email within 7 days with a link to view today's event if for any reason you experience any technical difficulties during the session and you can't see the main presentation for example then don't hesitate to contact me via chat panel if you lose your internet connection or you have to restart your computer you can always rejoin the session by clicking on the url that was sent in the original email finally at the end of the presentation i'll launch a test testimonial and feedback window we'd really appreciate it if you can take a few moments to provide your feedback and comments on how the session went and how we can improve future sessions now let me share a bit about sikri institute or sikri over the last 7 years sikri focused on community development through programs leadership development programs developing visionaries and trained over 3000 worldwide educational seminars stopping misinformation which reached 300000 globally and k k uh, k12 services teaching values and language skills which served over 41 schools 500 teachers and 1700 students today's webinar is free of charge for all attendees but not for sikri if you get value out of today's session i strongly urge you to consider donating through the website at www.sikri.org let us begin today's uh uh pre introduction so jasmine kaur is sikri's director of education she has worked in the education field for 15 years jasmine devotes her energies to developing resources and implementing workshops for parents and children harlev kaur is an educator with an experience in interactive activities to teach language skills she is the founder of kickly which is planning to release a book ek chota bachcha and many other sick nursery rhymes uh, before i begin i have two short announcements the sikri sense Institute offers Sidak a distinctive leadership development program for young adults seeking to increase their commitment towards Sikh faith and uh, it's a two week intensive immersion in Sikh culture language values and community through understanding bani which is scripture tarikh which is history and rahat which is discipline held annually in San Antonio sessions on leadership development and community building also serve as key foundation for Sidak Siddhakas find that the bonds they form during the form with their instructors and other students will inspire them toward activism long after the program ends. Home cooking and Texas Hill Country enrich the experience. 
this unique learning opportunity will help you discover your inner self, build stronger relationships, and infuse the Sikh spirit. This year, the Siddhik will take place 25th June through 9th July to 2011. For information, uh, visit the Sikri website. And uh, we strongly urge you to help make today's session interactive. 20 minutes into the presentation, you'll have the ability to start asking questions pertaining to the slides covered. If you have general questions, we urge you to wait till the end of the presentation. In this side panel, please state your names, city, and question. If you'd like to verbally ask your question, please confirm that you have a microphone. Please address all questions to me so I can comp compile them for Jasmine and Halep Kaur. Now I'd like to pass it over to Jasmine Kaur and Halep Kaur to begin today's presentation. Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? Why Guruji Ki Fateh? Vaiguji Ka Khalsa, Vaiguji Ki Fateh, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, this is Jasmine Kaur, and with me we, I have Harlip Kaur. Harlip Kaur, do you want to say Fateh to everyone? Vaiguji Ka Khalsa, Vaiguji Ki Fateh. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. It's so great uh, to have everyone. I know we have little kids. I know we have parents. I know we have teachers. I know we have grandparents. So we have a whole different group of, of people. And I know that I'm going to, in Richardson, Texas, we have one of the schools who is together. Um, and what we're going to ask all the adults to do is to help uh, the children along. Because as you know, it's not very easy for us to um, not be face to face with them. Uh, but you're face to face with them. So we hope that some of the exercises that we're going to be doing during this session, uh, you'll be able to kind of help them out. So let me begin. What we're going to talk about is the environment. So on March 14th, which was this past Monday, Sikhs all around the world celebrated Sikh Environment Day. And there were a lot of different things that you know, a lot of different uh, organizations did, a lot of different gurdwaras did. Some of you maybe had some workshops, some of you had a presentation at different schools. So we're going to talk about the environment and we're going to look at it from what does Guru Sahib have to say about it and what should, how should our relationship be to the environment. Okay, so let's start. The first thing I'd like you to do is think about what did you trash in the last 24 hours? Since yesterday morning all the way till today, can you think about some of the things that you trashed? Feel free to say it out loud. Our guess is that these are some of the things that you may have thrown out. I'm sure at least some of you had candy yesterday, right? Actually, I had candy yesterday too, and I threw out a candy wrapper. Banana peel? Maybe hardly candy threw out a banana peel because I'm not a big fan of banana. Tissue. I was sneezing a little bit yesterday. Paper plate? Styrofoam? Food maybe? Anything else? Share with your with the adults in the room or other kids in the room. And how about what did you use water for the last 24 hours? Yesterday morning you woke up and you probably did something with water. And all day you use water and even today. Were some of the things maybe taking the shower, drinking water, watering the plants? I hope some of you have plants that you water every day. 
and maybe a car wash. I think some of you younger children probably enjoy helping your parents wash their car at home, or maybe even went to a car wash with them, and that was using water. And I bet you ate between yesterday and today, so I'm hoping that you use some of it for cooking. So why is it that we're talking about this? I'm going to let Herlip Benji tell you. Well, thank you, Jasmine Benji. Um, so yes, we use water, and yes, we use many things. Things get thrown away, but so what's the problem? Well, the problem is that we have so many. We've had so many resources for our wonderful planet, and quickly those a lot of those resources they're depleting or they're or they're finishing up. So, in order to have more resources, we try to find other ways to fulfill our needs, and we haven't always made the best choices for our planet. And this has led to pollution, which has contaminated our air, our land, and our water. And sometimes, because we have a lack of resources, this has led to rising prices for both fuel and for food. Why do we have these problems? Well, if you look at this, uh, look at that image of the Earth, it's kind of deflated, right? So what what's happened is that we've kind of taken advantage of our Earth and we're facing moral bankruptcy. Now that's a pretty big term, let's think about it. When you go bankrupt, that means that you don't have a lot of money, right? You, there's a lack of money. So if we're morally bankrupt, that means that maybe we have a lack of morals, that we're not really thinking about what's the best thing for our world or for others who are living in this world. We're just kind of thinking of focusing on ourselves. So we're lacking morals and ignoring our principles and our values. We're leading very, very materialistic lifestyles. We always have to have the latest and the greatest right now. Everything is disposable. So yes, I have an iPhone, but do I really need that very brand new iPhone 4 when my regular iPhone is working just fine? We don't always take into account that all the, where these disposable things end up. And much of the waste that we have it's a product of modern technology, and it's not biodegradable, and it's not reusable. And so some of the other problem is that we are facing insecurity because there's a lack of resources. This makes us feel a little scared about supply and demand, so we end up buying way too much. We buy much more than we need. And there's nothing wrong with buying things, but we need to start thinking about, we just need to ask ourselves, is this something that I really, really need? Is this something that I can live without? So, how does this relate to sick heat, right? Well, it's really important that we realize that for us, remember what's the very first word that comes into Guru Granth Sahib? You're right, you see it on the slide, it's Ik Omkar, right? And ikonkar means one. There's one divine source that is everything. So do you have a window in your room right now? If you do, look outside your window a little bit. Do you see some trees maybe, dirt, maybe a few bugs, ants? Maybe even you have a pet? a pet dog or a pet cat? Well, what Guru Sahib is telling us is that whoever created all this, all this creation, the creation and the creator is cannot be separated. It's all the same. So when we talk about Vaiguru, Vaiguru is the creator for us, and Vaiguru created the creation. So when we are looking at all these things that are out here, that is the creation, we need to try to see how is it that we can recognize Vaiguru in all these wonderful things. Have you ever thought of it that way? 
So there should be no separation between the way we look at these things and the way we realize what Vaigru is. And we want to get to know Vaigru, right? We want to get to know Vaigru, we have to be able to appreciate what's out there. We have to be able to become aware of all the things. And what Pagit Kabir, uh, Sheikh Faridji, he says in his Barney, which is in the Guru Granth Sahib, he says that there is no difference in creator and creation. So how can I say anything bad to anyone? Or how could I do anything bad to anyone, anything, if there's no one other than, than Vaidru? So think about it. If we're not taking care of the creation that's out there, then we're not really helping ourselves realize that we're recognizing Vaidru or we're getting closer to Vaidru. Right? So something to think about. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard this line. Pavan Guru Pani Pika Mata Sarasamahat Divas Rat Dwe Dai Daya Kele Sagal Jagat. And it says that air is the Guru, water is the father, and earth is the great mother. So Guru Sab, Guru Nanak Sab, is saying that, you know, this earth that is out there, this is the great of greatest of great mother. So how how do we treat our mother? Do we kick our mom? Do we push her out of the way? Do we show her respect? Probably we show her respect, right? I hope most of us show her respect and that's what we should be doing. Well Guru Sahib is saying the same way that we do that to to our mother, that's the way we should be respecting the earth around us. Right? So, so think about how important it is that we take care of the earth and that Guru Sahib is telling us that it's so important that we need to take care of it. You know, Guruji uses a lot of different things about nature and a lot of different things um, that, that we are familiar with, he uses it in his Gurgani. And some of you, some of you older kids probably, you know that every month in the Gurdwara, they somehow, most Gurdwaras, some Gurdwaras, they read from the Barama on Sandrand, the, the first. Well, mentioned some of these trees. Let's see if you know any of them. There's Bord, Jund, Imli, Um, Neem, and Bid. So I don't know if you're familiar with Bid, but if you've ever gone to Hadlander side, there's at least three um, Bidi or Bid uh, trees inside, and these play a very special role in the history. So even though the world just started talking about the environment and started becoming environmentalist and thinking about, well, we need to start saving uh, the earth just in the last 30 or 40 years. Well, our students started thinking about this almost 500 years ago. So I think being an environment, environmentalist is just the right thing for kids to do, right? So now we're going to play another game, another matching game. Take a look at these trees. So I'll be honest with you, I only recognize two of them. So maybe Jasmine Fenty can help us with the others. Look really closely. Do you recognize any of these trees? Here's our choices. There is an umb tree, a nim tree, peep, sod, and fawn. Do you recognize any of them? I recognize two. So let me tell you the, the, the one that I recognize. So what, what's the um? Has anybody ever had a mango? Can you see a mango tree? That's number four. And then, hmm. I wasn't sure about this one. But Jasmine Benji, she helped me with this one. 
He said number one is men. Is that what you said? Maybe some of you guys knew that one. What about feet? It's the one with the really pretty leaves, almost heart shaped. Number two, sod. If you squint, really, kind of, it, it almost looks like a star. So the palm tree, number three. And then finally, that leaves us with bonds, something that pandas eat, the bamboo, right? That's a bamboo tree. You guys got it. So now you've learned at least five new words uh, for trees. And so this is Jasmine's and you said, when we read the Guru Granth Sahib, or when we hear um, some, some Shabbat from the Guru Granth Sahib, we might recognize some of these words. Do you know how the Gurus care for nature? We're going to talk about Guru Hadai Sahib, who is known for his love of nature. Okay, back to me. So remember I told you guys that on March 14th we celebrated Sikh Environment Day? And one of the reasons why we we celebrated Sikh Environment Day because Eco Sikh, an organization which is very caring about the environment, they shared with everyone that it would be nice to, to it's natural for a Sikh. Remember, um, her lip Andy was saying that it's very natural for a Sikh to be aware of the environment because our Guru Sahib, even 500 years ago, they were so aware and so caring of the environment. Well, on March 14th was also Guru Har Rai Sahib Gurgaddi Day. So, so like you say, this is for plural, right? And he is known for his love for the creator and the creation alike. Remember we were talking about how it can't be separated? All the Gurus have the same love, but Guru Har Rai Sahib was kind of more known for it because of the kinds of things that he did and all of us are aware of. <coughs> Excuse me. So Harley Fendi told us that he had developed this beautiful town of Kiratpur, which was a town of parks and gardens so that it was just beautiful for everyone. And in there, he had a special clinic, right? And in this clinic, he would grow different kinds of herbs that could be used for medicine. And um, so he basically, he had a pharmacy or a dispensary where he, people would come and they would be able to take the herbs that they needed. You know what is really cool? I think what is really cool is that, think about it. If someone is growing herbs, do they always know, okay, what is this herb going to be helpful for? What kind of disease will it be helpful for? Do doctors know just by waking up that which uh, medicine is going to be important for, uh, for what disease? Probably not, right? They have to do some research, they have to figure out, they have to do some experimenting. So Guru Sahib and his Sangha, they also, they kind of had like a medical research center which had all these different kind of herbs in there. And they were, they were doing, you know, research. I thought that was pretty cool because sometimes we kind of think back to the times of the Guru and we don't even think of these words like research or experimenting and stuff. But it was important because how do you learn? That's what Guru Sahib is teaching us, that if we need to learn about things, just like we're saying about all these words that are in the Guru Granth Sahib that relate to the environment, well, we have to put effort into it. We have to learn about it, right? So something for us to really think about. And he also had an animal sanctuary. So what he would do was he would capture old and sick animals and then he would treat them, make sure they were healthy and good to go, and they, he'd release them into the forest, which was their natural habitat. Right? So what's happening these days? We're kind of getting rid of like a lot of the forest area and these animals, they don't even have their own area to live in. But we have to think about, well, what did our gurus do? What they did was, if animals do get hurt because it's a part of nature, right? Like 
they get into an accident or something may happen, there might be a natural disaster, he would take care of them and he would send them back into their natural area. Okay? So there's one particular sake about Guru Harai Saab that I really like. Um, and it's because I like flowers a lot. So one day, he had gone to visit his grandfather. Saab was in a garden. Now, what do you usually see when you go into a garden? You usually probably see like, beautiful flowers. You see some big trees. You see like a water fountain sometimes. You see uh, herbs, different vegetables. So particularly, Guru Harai Saab, he was wearing a long chola. Do you know what a chola is? I'm pretty sure you've seen people at the Gurdwara wear cholas, or even you have worn cholas yourself. So what Guru Saab, you know, the reason why a lot of people used to wear cholas is because it was a sign of responsibility. Like, you know, warriors used to be able to wear this. So as he was walking with this long chola, he happened to topple over a beautiful flower that was on the stem. And he saw that and he kind of got saddened a little bit. And so he, Argobin Saab, he came over to him and you know, he said, I understand that you're saddened. He didn't say, hey, what a horrible thing you did. So he spoke to him. He had a conversation with him. He said, I understand that you're saddened, but it's really important that we are responsible for our actions. If we have power, if we're powerful, that's okay. That's part of, of you know the way we live. But it's really important that we are very cautious, we are very responsible for how we are acting. So he said, you know, you need to take care of how you walk with your chola. If you know that your chola is going to go and bang into flowers around you, then pick it up and, and make sure it doesn't bother the natural surroundings around you. So since that day, Guru Harai Saab, it's really, he really understood that, you know, I need to be able to love and be cautious of the environment around me, the surroundings around me, and that is what reflected the kind of behavior that he had, the virtuous behavior that he had. So I, I always think that you know, it's really important for us to think about how can we be sensitive to the natural world and then how can we be responsible with other things uh, that maybe aren't related to the natural world but to humans and other things like that. Oh, let's do a quick another flower matching activity. So we see over here, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have word, heard the word summer or cold. And which number do you think that matches with? I think most of you may have picked one or three. But those of you who picked one, you're absolutely right. That is a summer record. Number two. These are, if you go to uh, India or Punjab, you'll see that they make cars out of this, this flower, you know, those orange flowers. I think, that, I think this is the orange flower that they make it out of. Anyone know what word this is? This is? What's the word for this? I'm sure some of the adults probably are thinking, yes, we know, we know. And they're right, it's the thumb. And that leaves number three with Kabiyal. That's right. Okay. Um, in the previous slide, not the one with the cards, but the one when we were talking about Guru Hadaiji, Jasmine Sanji was talking about responsibility, power and responsibility. 
So now I'd like to share Kavita with you, and then we're going to focus on one of the paragraphs, and it kind of talks about it talks about power and responsibility. So this is a Kavita from our book called Ik Chota Bacha and Other Sikh Nursery Rhymes, and it will be available for purchase next month. But this Kavita is called Baba Ji Kere Kam Kara. So I'm going to read it for you, okay? Baba Ji Kere Kam Kara, De De Naal Kahan Kuch Kara, Naam Jap, Van Ke Chak, Wahi Guru Nu Sada Man Vich Rakh. Jut Na Bol, Apne Pag Na Rol, Guru Ang Sang Tu Kadi Na Dol. Zulam Na Kar, Zalam To Na Dar, Mukte Man Vich Sada Har Har. Ho Me Saj, Gareeb Nu Saj, Soni Zastar Tu Chit Se Saj. Satche Marag Jal, Kisne Dekhya Kal, Tera Jeevan Mukit Te Sada Safal. Baba Ji Kere Kam Kara, De De Na Kahan Kush Kara. In the fourth paragraph, it says, Zulam na kar, zalam to na dar, mukte man vich sada har har. What is zulam? Someone who does zulam, maybe they're cruel, unjust, or unfair, perhaps. And then what about zalam? Someone who does zulam is a zalam. So someone who does things like that, they're a tyrant, or you might even call them a bully. So, so what we need to do is always keep Wahiguru in our mind and in our heart when we're dealing with Zulam and Zalim. So I'd like to share a Sakti with you. Has anyone ever heard of Jahangir? Jahangir was the emperor during the time of Guru Arjun Dev. He's the one who had caused uh, he, he had executed Guru Arjun Dev Ji, and he had also imprisoned Guru Hazel bin Sahib for several years. So when Jahangir, after he was the emperor, he passed his throne to Shah Jahan, his son. And Shah Jahan had four sons. Let's see if any of the names sound familiar of his four sons. There was Dada Shiko, Soja Muhammad, Aurang Zeb, and Murad and even though Dara Shiko should have been the next emperor after Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb already had his eye on the prize. He wanted to be the next emperor. And he would do anything to become the next emperor, even if that meant killing his own brother. And he attempted to do just that by mixing poison in Dara Shiko's food. So then Shah Jahan, he called all these fears and fears, and they tried all these uh, different charms and spells, and they tried all these medicines, but nothing would would cure Dara Shiko's illness. And then finally, somebody told Shah Jahan that Guru Hadai. Remember, Jasmine Sanji told us that Guru Hadai Ji in his garden he had a dispensary of herbal medicine. Well, somebody told Shah Jahan that maybe the Guru can help you. Shah Jahan, he was a little reluctant to ask Guru Haraiji for help, but he really wanted to save his son's life. So he wrote Guru Haraiji a message, I sent him a letter. And you know, even though Shah Jahan's father, Jahangir, he had been very hostile and cruel towards Guru Haraiji's great grandfather, Guru Arjun Devji, and his grandfather, Guru Hargobin, what do you think the Guru did? Do you think he said, no, I'm not going to help you? Absolutely not. The Guru, he showed nothing but compassion, and he, sh he shared the necessary herbs. And soon, the, emperor, uh, it, uh, the emperor's son was all better. So that Ashita was cured. The Guru, he, he didn't allow his mind to be clouded by unjust behavior of the Hongir. He wanted to be fair and just, even though the Mughal Empire had not been fair and just with Guru Arjun Dev Ji and Guru Hagavan. So just like our Guru, we always need to be just and we always need to remember why Guru. So now I'd like uh, for us to listen to the Kavita with some music and feel free to sing along.
about that we're going to try saying it one more time Sorry about that we're going to try saying it one more time I hope all of you can hear me. Okay, I'm not sure if you were able to hear um, hear the kavita, but maybe we can sing it a little bit for you. I'm going to try, but I didn't practice, so please, please bear with me. Baba ji kiri kamantara. Jide naal tanu khush kara, naam jap band ke chhatir, bhai guru nu sada man vich rakh, baba ji kere kam kara, jide naal tanu khush kara, chhut na ho apni pag na ro, guru ang sang tu kadi na ro, baba ji kere kam kara. So it kind of goes like that. There is a CD that's going to be coming out soon with the book, and guess what? You can hear, and there's only not only one um, poem, but there are ten, nine others. So you can go to www.chiklikids.com and listen to it over there, and soon when the book is out, you can have a copy for yourself. Okay. So, Harvard Kanji was telling us that, you know, we need to think about okay, even if someone is considered a zalim, even if, you know, zulum is going on, if there is something that they need, you know, we have to make sure that if it's not, if it's out of good intention, then we should be able to help them with what we have. Just like Guru Harai he, he was able to do that for Shah Jahan. Who was, you know, whose father had was considered a zalim, right? So Guru Sahib, Guru Harai Sahib, you know, he's often considered as this this Guru Sahib who was very sensitive to nature around him, and he was very compassionate. But it's also very important for us to remember that even though he had all those those parts, which all the other gurus had also. He also, you know, had 2,200 mounted soldiers, and he was always ready 
to go out and fight against injustice. So sometimes what we do, we just say, oh, you know, this Guru Sahib, he was very sensitive and caring. And this other Guru Sahib, he was the one who used to like to fight. But we don't, we shouldn't be thinking like that because all the Guru Sahib, all the way from Guru Nanak Sahib to Guru Gobind Singh Sahib, they, they were different bodies. But what they were doing, what they were standing up for, was exactly the same. So let's go through, you know, some things that people these days are doing. Sometimes we think, oh, you know, six are probably not doing anything for the environment. We get a little disappointed and stuff. But there are people who are, you know, doing things in, in different parts of the world. These three individuals are mainly in uh, India. Um, and I'm sure many of you have heard of of this student thing. And what he would do is he would take care of you know the, those who were discarded or who were disabled. He'd take care of them. But along with that, he would spread you know awareness on pollution and soil erosion. And you know he would always be on on a bicycle versus you know getting on a car or anything like that because he said that's going to cause more pollution. So why should I be the individual who adds to it? He wanted to take away, uh, you know, help take away from the pollution. So he initiated uh, a lot of plantation drives. Baba Balbir Singh, picture of us, he, you know what he did? He, he brought the community together and he said, hey, you know this river where Guru Nanak Sahib was also known to go and, and bathe in? That had become so dark so black, filthy, and he, he said, we need to clean this out. Because remember we were talking about moral bankruptcy in the beginning? The thing is that if we keep ourselves clean inside, then we are also going to naturally keep everything clean around us. So what happens is that humans they forget, they get so focused on themselves, they get so focused on being materialistic that we want, 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 they forget what that's doing to everything, you know, outside. So we need to be really, really careful that what do we always have to be cautious of. And Baba Seva Singh Ji, he uh, had done a lot of plantation drives. And look at that number. It says he successfully grown nearly 50,000 trees of original species. So that's a large number that, that he uh, helped get done. Then in England and in, in Britain, there is a, a certain area where the six, they planted you know, uh, uh, different trees and stuff. So it's pretty cool. And you see this picture over here um, that, that the six, you know, they realize that we need to have like our own plantation. And in Punjab, there's uh, Pradeep Singh Rai, and he's the founder of DEEP, Defenders of the Ecology and Environment of the Punjab. So it's, it's extremely important for us to, to know about these people. And if there are some older uh, children who are in the are listening in on the webinar, or some of the teachers or parents, maybe you can do a little bit more research on these five different uh, individuals and, and uh, the Khalsa Woods, um, and share more with the kids, and maybe even plan to do an activity around it and, and build a room around it. So. What can we do to take care of the environment? Let me pass it on to Harlan Tanji. Well, let's explore this. What can I do? Maybe I can only buy what I need. So overconsume. Avoid material distractions. Look at that picture with all those water bottles. What can I do about that? Perhaps I can buy one stainless steel bottle and just refill it every day rather than taking a new water bottle with me every day. You see that 
TV, it's just goth TV or recreation. Maybe just sitting in, in front of, instead of sitting in front of the TV all day, I can go out and enjoy nature. Look at this one. Get out of this cycle. What do we do? We all work so that, that way we can buy things, and then we end up consuming these things, and then we decide. But instead, instead of getting, uh, instead of being stuck in this cycle, we need to be out there and take care of our planet. And how do we do that? We can do that by planting trees, enjoying nature, recycling, and mainly just reducing some of the things that we buy. And what are you going to do about it? Let's take a look. As Jasmine Fenty had mentioned, like on a Putin thing, can we maybe we can start riding our bicycle more often if we need to go to go a short distance. Maybe we can walk. Think about it. We can all contribute to our Earth in some way. And a couple of examples that we can use in our gurdwara are. Let's say, think about your gurdwara right now, right? You, obviously, there's a kitchen over there, and we make lunger over there. Usually, we buy a lot of ingredients for, for the lunger. Everyone, every week, brings whoever is lunger, whoever's in lunger save up for that day, they are bringing a lot of things. Maybe what your gurdwara can do, and some of the older kids can take the lead on this, not everyone has to bring all the different kind of things every uh, every week. Maybe we think about, okay, for this month, this is how much healthy we need, and this is how much salt we need, and this is how much sugar we need. So think of it from that perspective. Then the other thing in the kitchen is, does your gurdwara kitchen have a recycling bin? If it doesn't, then maybe we can figure out, okay, at least we need to recycle all the cans and the cardboard that comes in, right? So you have to be, take the effort. You have to go into your kitchen and see what is here and what is not here, and how can I make this happen, and who am I going to ask to help me to make it happen? First, it has to be an adult. You have to get permission from an adult, and then you have to get all your, uh, your friends together, and everyone has to be dedicated to it. So maybe that's one way of, of helping out. Do you use styrofoam plates for lumber in your at your gurdwara? I know some of the gurdwaras where I go to use styrofoam plates, and I understand that it's a very easy thing to go get styrofoam plates. But maybe we can think about different options. One of the options could be getting steel poly, which some of the gurdwaras also end up using, or we can think about if we if we don't have the people to do the seva of washing the salis or we don't want to use too much water, then maybe we can just buy recycled plates to use in the lumber as well. And you know how Harley Fanzi just said that if you're going the short distance, then maybe you can get on a bicycle? Well, a lot of people come to the uh, to the Gurdwaras who live close by. So maybe we don't have to take two cars to the Gurdwara. Maybe we can carpool and take one car instead of taking two cars for, for five people. Most gurdwaras have a lot of space to plant trees and herbs and uh, flowers. Maybe your gurdwara does too. Maybe in the back of the gurdwara, maybe in the front of the gurdwara. Have you ever thought about maybe we can do a project and do some planting? And the other thing to think about is, have you ever gone out to the surroundings of your gurdwara and seen if there's a lot of litter laying around? Well, maybe it's time that we group up kids and adults and just do a cleanup around our gurdwara, just like we, we do a cleanup of our house sometimes. So, um, these are just different kinds of things that, that you can do, and it will be fun to, for all of you to do it together, but I want everyone to truly remember that 
the important thing that we as six need to remember is that there is no separation between Vaiguru and the creation. And if we're if we are not aware of that, if we don't know that on the inside, if we're not clear about that, then the kind of actions that we are going to do to the creation around us, it's not going to be what Vaiguru wishes us to do. What why how it's not going to be how we are going to be able to serve Vaiguru or to recognize Vaiguru, or to, to become one with Vaiguru. So we really need to do our part in saving energy, we need to save the earth, we need to become more aware of how, um, how we need to, you know, to, what is out there. You know, maybe the trees that we spoke about, they're in the Guru Granth side, but maybe they're not in your area. Well, then go find out what are the kind of trees that are in your area, right? Because these are all fun things to do. That's the other thing. So what we're going to do now is um, if you have any questions, then please send them to uh, Gurvinder Singh at 636 Institute uh, on your panel. Uh, and in the meantime, what we would do is we'd like to talk about a couple of other things that we want you to be aware of. So, uh, Gurvinder Singh, you can let us know when you have any questions. And, uh, you know, if someone wants to read their question out, then we can do that. Otherwise, uh, we can, uh, you can read as well. So, let me begin with, let me begin with uh, the poem that you heard. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't able to hear the whole thing. We tested it a couple of times, but it worked, and in the very end, again, it didn't work. But I hope uh, Harlip and I did an okay job at least trying to sing it a little bit. But this book called Ik Chota Bacha and Other Six Nursery Rhymes is coming out next month. And Kikli is the name of the, the publisher who published it, and it was written by Jagdeep Singh, who is from the Ujjal Vidar Memorial Foundation in LA, right? And it was illustrated by Arshveen Kato. And it's really cute, um, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun because uh, uh, Kikli, this, this company, it's, uh, it belongs to Harley Frenzy, who was we talking to us. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the website is right there www.kiklikids.com and you can hear samples of the different uh, different kavitas that are in there and trust me they're a lot of fun also we want to give a special thank you to our contributors like uh, Gurvinder Vijay said in the beginning that these webinars that we bring to everyone to kids and adults alike they are, um, they, they, they cost money for Sick Research Institute, but we provide them at no charge to all of you who listen in, whether you're an adult, whether you're a child. So what we ask is that we ask for people to help contribute towards the cost of this. And these three individuals, Sabneet Singh uh, and Savrad Singh Banjil, who works at What Vision, um, and the Robert and Taliwal, they contributed towards this particular webinar because they wanted to make sure that this webinar takes place for, for all the children across, uh, across the world. Because everyone can hear uh, you know, these webinars. It doesn't matter where you are. So it's, uh, we're very, very thankful for them, to them from all of us including those who are listening and all of us at Sick Reef. And I want, if you're an uh, adult or if you're a kid, maybe you can tell your parents and your teachers that they can go to www.sixeducatorsnetwork.org uh, for more resource, resources. The lesson plan uh, that we developed for the environment uh, so that we can talk about, look at different the different activities over there and different things uh, that Guru Sahib has told us. 
they can go there and they can download these resources and use them. And in fact, I already know a few schools already used the lesson plan and they presented it to their own schools. So, Gurinder uh, Singh, are there any questions for us? Unmuted. No, uh, there, there are no questions I see in the chat panel at this point. Okay, so if those of you who are either in big groups or you have access to email, um, please send us an email at info at 6ri.org. We would love to hear your comments on the webinar. We'd love to hear your comments on the material that was out there. We would love to hear your comments on the Savita that was out there. So please uh, send us, you know, what your thoughts were about this webinar and also send us any other topics that you would like to hear about. Maybe there is a certain topic that your school is really interested in. Maybe you want to hear about a particular uh, guru sub, a particular personality, and then we can come up with a webinar so that it can be presented to you. And you know, this webinar that we came up with, it wasn't only Harley Fanji and, and I who worked on it. We have a special person in Punjab whose name is Sundar Paul Singh, and he does a lot of research for us and, and brings the material together for us. So we want to really, really thank him as well for his hard work. And putting all this together, it takes a lot of people. It involves a lot of people to make sure that you know we're able to get you the the audio right, we're able to get you the slides right. So I want to thank everyone, Ravinder Singh, and Shraddha, uh, Shraddha Nemban, who is our operations specialist. And I want to especially thank Harlip for for also presenting with us. And I hope that all of you enjoyed it. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. Or we also do children workshops. So if you want to do a workshop, you can visit www.sickery.org. And we can come out to your area and, and do a workshop for you. Jasmine Why Kaur and Harla Kaur. Uh, yes. There is a question on the chat panel oh. from Sumit Kaur in Dallas. OK. Yes. And uh, she's wondering, were there any other gurus involved in care of our nature. And this is Sumit Kaur from Dallas. Were there any other gurus? Yes, absolutely. All the gurus were definitely in tune with, uh, with nature. But one of, you know, Guru Nanak Sab, for example, he would particularly go and sit under a tree and, and remember Vaiguru. So they that's where, you know how we think, oh, it's too hot outside, so uh, let's come in and, and we'll do our spot inside and take care of things inside. But Guru Sahib, you know, his kind of thinking was, there's this beautiful natural resource that I have, which is a wonderful tree, and even if the sun is out, it's, uh, it's going to shade me. So let me sit under the sun and, and uh, get, you know, shade from that. And Harley Friends is going to add something too. Well, still speaking about Guru Nanak Dev Ji, um, after he passed the Guruship uh, to Bhai Nana, who was Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, he founded the city of Kirtasma, right? So um, in this city, he, 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 was, he farmed quite a bit. So he had lots of crop growing and things like that. So he was out there, one with nature, planting. Um, yeah, and don't forget he was a farmer himself too. Anything else, Ravinder Singh? No, I don't see any other questions in the chat panel at this time. Well, thank you very much, everyone. We really, really appreciate it that you had come and on a Saturday morning and decided to uh, listen in. Don't forget to send us emails. We would love to hear from you and we look forward to seeing you soon again.
ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ एवरीवन ਫॉर ਅਟੈਂਡਿੰਗ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਵੈਬਿਨਾਰ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਲਾਂਚਿੰਗ ਅ feedback session and i'd really appreciate it if you can uh, spend a few minutes uh, answering some of the questions so that we can make future webinars also very useful and relevant to you and uh, once again thank you everyone for joining vaigurji ka khalsa vaigurji ki fateh